Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I've got a game I'm very excited to show off. I've been waiting for this one. This is Hoplomachus Remastered, and I just got a review copy in. If you didn't see my coverage last year of Hoplomachus Victorum, which is a solo campaign game, this was crowdfunded at the same time, and it's an updated and reimagined version of the original Hoplomachus. And there are two solo co-op modes in Remastered, Onslaught and Ascension. I'm going to be playing Onslaught in this video. I'll do a Ascension video later. And speaking of later, we're going to have a giveaway. The entry form is in this video's description and in the pinned comment, and I'm going to announce the winner in the next video when I cover the uh, Titan mode. And what's being given away is an extra set of the metal dice for Hoplomachus. Chip Theory accidentally sent me two of them, and I figured I would uh, pass the good fortune along. So again, check the video description or the pinned comment. You can enter and we'll find out who the winner is when I cover the other mode later on. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. And just to note, you also get double entries in our contest, like the one for the metal dice. You can also check out our separate streaming channel for even more great content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So Onslaught mode is, again, a solo co-op game mode, one of two. It's for one to two players. Uh, either way, you'll be going up against these Immortals. I'm going to play solo today. And there are six of these Immortals. They're mini-bosses. And this mode is basically a, uh, a really tough survival mode because the idea is you'll be going against one Immortal at a time. And if you can defeat them, you go on to the next one, but you don't get all your units back that have died. You don't get all the tactics back you've used. So you're slowly, like, losing more and more resources and seeing how far you can go. But in terms of the basics of a Hoplomachus turn, you're going to have one turn for the Immortals, then one turn for the player, and then one turn for the Arena units, which are going to be random units coming out of this bag that are allied with the Immortal. But on each of those three turns, the structure is pretty much the same. First, you deploy a unit. I can deploy to any of these six red spaces. The AI can deploy to any of the blue ones. And just to show over here, they have a bunch of different factions you can choose from, each with their own set of uh, 10 types of chips plus a hero here. Three of the unit chips and three of the tactic chips are shared among factions. Not every faction has the exact same shared ones, but they're all like from the generic pool. And then three of the units and one of the tactic and the hero, of course, are totally unique uh, mixes for that faction. So once you deploy a unit, they start with the indicated number of health chips underneath. Once all their health is gone, they are defeated. And the units have a movement value, how far they can move, a range value, which is almost always going to be one, except for range units, which means they have to be adjacent to attack, a number of dice they roll to deal damage to somebody in their range, a type, which doesn't really matter for this game mode, and finally some special abilities for the character, some of which are innate, like retaliate, some of which have an S for special, which means they use it instead of their regular attack, and the warrior doesn't have one, but you also have A's for ability, which is used uh, after moving but before attacking. So you deploy a unit, but then they are fatigued. They basically have summoning sickness. They can't do anything for that turn. Then all the units that were already on the board can move up to their movement value. Uh, you can't move through other units, but otherwise you can move as much as you want. Then you use any abilities that are pertinent and you want to use. And finally, you can attack with each unit in whatever order you want. So that's the general flow of the turn. And additionally, after deployment before movement, you can place one tactic chip down. Some of these are positive, and you can place them on your own units, like poise. Some of them are negative, like hamstring, and you place them on enemy units. Generally speaking, for the enemy placement, uh, the enemy has to be adjacent to one of your units, unless you have someone with the tactical keyword, like my strategist here, and then you can place your tactics anywhere you want. Now, how do you actually win this mode? Well, you've got to defeat the immortal, who in this case has six life to start, but you can't attack them directly, like it says, they're immortal. So instead, whenever you defeat one of their helper arena chips, you deal one damage to them. And additionally, there's sort of a King of the Hill capture the flag element uh, at the start of each of your turns. So they have to survive all the enemy response. At the start of each of your turns, if you have a unit on these stone hexes, one of the two, for each unit, you're going to deal a damage to them as well. Now, you can still attack the Immortal with regular attacks, but instead of dealing damage to them, you instead increase your crowd favor down here. And there are four bonuses you can unlock. At the first spot, you get to flip your hero over. They are not deployable or usable until you reach that spot. But after you reach that, you can put them out. Although just note that it is an instant loss condition if your hero is defeated. So you got to make a tough choice of when you use them. The second spot lets you get all your tactics back from your discard pile, which is important because uh, each of the waves, each of the times you fight one of the immortals, uh, all the units that are defeated get discarded. All the tactics that are used get discarded and they don't come back. So you are again running low on resources, but reaching this spot will get you all your tactics back for a second use. This one lets you return two units to your camp. So that's kind of like the tactics one, lets you bring some people back. And finally, this spot lets you unlock an extra awesome hero who can then be deployed and they don't have to uh, be activated like your hero does. And this uh, track will reset for each wave so you can get these bonuses multiple times. All right, that's mostly it. You'll see how the AI activates on their turns. They have a pretty straightforward priority system that you'll see in action. So let's start right after we meet our teams. So our first immortal is Azdaha. Looks like he's like a 
lizard monster dragon thingy. He's got two movement, two range, and six life. And he attacks for a green die, which hits on four out of six faces. You can kind of barely see the four there. And a yellow die, which hits on two out of six faces. So not too bad damage-wise. But how all of these immortals work in this game mode is when they attack, you also check which of their dice hit. And each hit will also activate a complementary ability. For Azdaha, the green says each other unit in combat must simultaneously move one hex closer to him if possible. So he just kind of like sucks everybody towards him. And if the yellow hits, he gains one rage, then deals damage to its target. So it has to have been attacking somebody equal to its rage. So it's going to have this little counting up die that's going to make it more and more dangerous. And this never goes down while we're fighting him. Additionally, he's got keywords. He's got the innate Beastmaster. And a lot of the arena units in this bag are beasts that would normally have the roaming skill, which basically means that they are forced to <laughs> run around the arena in random directions. But with him being a Beastmaster while he's on the board, that's not going to affect them. And his second one is a special attack, Agile. Uh, the key thing about special attacks is when you use them, they don't trigger defensive abilities that uh, other characters might have. So that's all that Agile does. It still has him attacking with the green and yellow, but he's not going to be affected by like us having automatic retaliate abilities and those kind of things to deal damage to him. All right, meaning my team, I've got some basic tactics. Adrenaline, you put on one of your units and it has plus one movement until it dies. Pretty great. Bolster health, you put on one of your units and it gains two hit points until it dies. Pretty great. And hamstring, you put on an enemy unit and that unit cannot attack if it moves in the same turn. And it's important to note that you cannot put tactics chips on elite units, which include both the immortals and my hero. So I couldn't like hamstring him. That would clearly be way too strong. And then poise is the tactic. Instant, this unit is no longer dazed. Oh, sorry, I was saying fatigue, but I meant dazed. So basically I could uh, deploy a unit and immediately put poise on them and they would get to move and or attack the same turn. And looking at my basic units, I have three that are consistent among most of the factions. So Warrior attacks a lot, moves to three life, has Retaliate to hit back when they get attacked, and Whirlwind to attack a bunch of people if they're adjacent to him. Marksman, black and yellow die, very low life, slow moving, but they have two range, or they can use their special attack long shot to attack at four range, although they only roll the weak yellow die when they do that. Big thing for them is they have first strike, so they can attack the turn they get deployed. And then finally, Strategist has three movement. The tactical keyword means they can move the turn they're deployed, and it lets me play tactics on enemy units no matter where they are. They have a red die, which never misses. So they deal consistent one damage, and they have Inspire, which means any of their allies adjacent to them roll an extra blue die to attack. Pretty nice. Now, as for our unique units, we've got the Laquarius or something. <laughs> one green die, pretty fast moving, good health. They have the Taunt ability, which means people have to attack them instead of other units if they're adjacent to them. Although with the Immortal having the Agile ability that ignores the defensive powers, that wouldn't apply. And then Hook lets them pull somebody that's two hexes away next to themselves. The Leviathan is my own beast. They've got the roaming ability. So even though they have one movement, I have to roll for where they go randomly unless I have a Beastmaster in play like the Depth Charger. But they have perfect strike. If they hit with both dice, and the red is always a hit, so really it's just one third of the time when they hit with the yellow, they deal double damage. So four instead of two in that case. And they also have the Hook ability. So all over here in seven life. That's really the best part. And then the Depth Charger also has Tactical, although it's misprinted as Tactician. That's uh, in the FAQ. Uh, they also move three. Also, oh, three life, actually. Yeah, that's the same as Beast. Oh, no, it is one more than the Strategist. Nice. They have the potential to do two damage instead of the one of the Strategist. They have Beastmaster, like I said. And they have Regen 1, which means they heal one damage uh, on each of their turns if they're alive. That's great. Remember, I can't use her yet, but just to show her, this is Tempestia. Two movement, seven life. She has retaliate to hit back if she gets attacked. She has deflect, which means if she gets hurt by an attack in a turn, she can't get attacked again. Not quite as useful here because the immortal ignores it with their agile ability. And there can only be up to two arena units on the board at a time. I should say I'm also limited to up to three units. So the idea of two of them attacking her at once to cancel one of their attacks is pretty unlikely. She also has hook. So a lot of hooking for this Atlantean faction. That's who I am, by the way. I am the Atlanteans. All right, so now let's uh, actually get to it. Now that we've met everybody and see how uh, badly I get crushed. So first, you always start with an immortal turn. And the first turn, they just deploy and they're dazed. So they're not going to do anything else. Then I'll have my full turn and then an arena turn where they spawn some allies. Uh, so for my turn, and <laughs> I have a bit of an interesting idea. I can put out the depth charger or the strategy. So I'm going to do the depth charger because I want to try to use my Leviathan and have uh, their beast master help out. So I'm going to deploy with three life right to here. And I could play a tactic on them like adrenaline for plus movement or bolster health, but I'm not going to do that yet. Then I would do move, ability, engage, which is where you attack. Now, normally uh, he'd be dazed and couldn't do anything, but because he has tactical, he can move. But remember, the Azdaha is going to, whenever he rolls a hit on a green, pull everybody one towards him. So if I uh, adds, went here and went one, two, three to be on the stone and start my turn there to do one automatic damage to him, 
Then if he moved up and went two, and then two-thirds chance rolled a hit on the green, he would pull me one towards him, taking me off the stone. I don't think his attack would hit because uh, he just rolls the dice even if he can't attack. And in that case, he would have already missed his chance to attack. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be here, and I'm going to move right there. So that now with the two-thirds chance that he rolls to pull me, he'll actually pull me onto the stone. Ha 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 ha. Well, that's the end of my activation. Then for the arena turn, as long as they don't have uh, two units, not counting the immortal on the board already, they're going to get a random one, which is a bandit. He's got five life, uh, just one black die, which hits five, six at a time, so that's not great. Oh, he has regen, yuck, and taunt. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty tough. He's pretty nasty. Uh, let's put him as far away as possible. But again, days, so nothing else happening for their turn. We go back to the immortal. And now to briefly talk about how the enemy AI works now that the Immortal is actually doing stuff. So you skip deployment for the Immortal for the rest of this wave because he's already on the board. He's not going anywhere. But then he's going to move, use abilities, and attack. So for movement, they're going to check who their mark is. And first, they prefer any units that they can get into attack range. Now for him, he can move to and then shoot to. So nobody's in attack range yet. And within those units that he can reach, there is a different priority. First priority, and this is for everybody, not just the Immortal, is uh, anybody on the stone hexes earning automatic damage. Second priority is an enemy hero if they're out. And finally, third priority is the strongest unit, the unit with the most health. And with ties in any of those, they're going to go for the nearest one. And if it's still tied, you can choose who they go for. Now, in this case, he can't actually reach me. So instead, he's just going to move as close as he can to the highest priority person, which is uh, two spaces. So it doesn't matter too much. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go there, I guess. And then he would use any abilities, but he doesn't have any. And finally, uh, if he could attack, he would roll his attack dice. But specifically for the Immortal, you always roll their attack dice because you're still checking whether their abilities trigger. So a green is what will pull me towards him. Actually, it says every unit. So even like his own abandon will get pulled towards him. And the yellow is going to tick up his rage to start dealing automatic uh, damage to people he's attacking. Don't want any of that. So. so for a hit on green and a miss on yellow. Yes, perfect. Okay, cool. So he pulls everybody towards him. Blip, thank you very much. But his rage does not tick up. So that's it for his turn. So now for me, first I check if anybody's on a stone, and yes, my depth charger is, so that's one-sixth of the Azdaha's life gone, but that might never happen again because, uh, yeah, he can do a lot of damage and pull people off of that stuff, although I guess I could do the same trick of like moving off it again. But in any case, it's time for me to deploy, and hey, Mr. Leviathan, while your Beastmaster friend is out there, you're looking pretty cool. He's got seven life, one movement. Because he has roaming, normally I would have to roll a d6, and this would uh, indicate which way he goes. But as long as the depth charger is there with Beastmaster, I can actually choose which way he moves. He can hook people closer to him, remember? And if he hits with both his attacks, then he uh, gets the perfect strike and does double damage, which would be awesome. See, so yeah, I'll get him uh, as close as I can. Try to get the bandit to go towards him instead of the depth charger. And now I can move, not this guy because he's dazed, but the depth charger. And yeah, let's... Uh, Let's try to do the same trick again and hope the boss doesn't murder us and <laughs> go right there. Maybe I should run further away. Hmm. I don't know. Actually, no, before I move, let's use a tactic. I will go ahead and play bolster health. Uh, you just put it under the guy if it's a permanent one. He immediately gains two more life. So even if like the boss uh, gets really lucky and like rolls a yellow to deal automatic damage to him, he should survive, assuming he gets pulled uh, to get us another automatic damage on the boss. All right, so that's it for us. Uh, no attacking. So let's go to the arena. They only have one person, and their max is two, so we're going to get another random one. Who you got for me? A lion! Yeesh. Okay, so uh, green and yellow, they have perfect strike, so if they hit on both of those, it's double damage. Lordy. Uh, but combat lock. Combat lock means if one of uh, my units starts a turn adjacent to him, then they can't move away. He's just kind of mauling them. And he's got roaming, but remember, uh, the immortal cancels that out. Two movement, four life. That guy's not a joke. Yeah, I'd much rather him go toward the Leviathan, so let's have him, like, here. Well, actually, yeah, he's not going to reach us. In the, well, I want to be safe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, here's fine. Okay, now the Bandit is going to move, too, and this is important. Because the Depth Charger is no longer on the Stone Hex, the next priority would be a hero, and then the strongest unit, which is the Leviathan. So I'm getting him to go toward the Leviathan instead of toward my Depth Charger, which is what I wanted. So he moves to, uh, not within range to do anything. His regen doesn't matter because he's not hurt. There we go. Now, my next turn, the Leviathan can pull him in, hopefully get a perfect strike and eat that guy. Okay, that's it for the arena. So the Immortal is up. Uh, he can reach this guy. So even though the Leviathan has more priority, he's going to attack the Depth Charger. Uh, he wants to be at the farthest range possible. So even if he could move adjacent, he would stop at range two. So here, here, equidistant. I don't know, let's have him here. He's going to attack this guy, and let's hope for the exact same result as last time. A miss on yellow, because now his rage would tick up, and he would deal automatic damage to his target, which is actually the Depth Charger. Uh, and definitely hope for a green to get on to the stone for another free damage. And... Yeah, let's go! 
So it is a damage. It's not all sunshine and roses, but uh, I get pulled. Oh, that's right. Everyone gets pulled. So the lion and have the bandit go there. And I guess my Leviathan. All right. Yeah, this is a pretty great start because start of my turn. We're on a stone. Whoops. <laughs> He's down to four life. I haven't lost anything yet. All right, now who do I want to put out? Um, I could try to get somebody on this one. Or I guess next to it, hoping that the guy uh, rolls a hit on his green again. Um, so, yeah, what the hey? Let's try to, like, really rush the stones. We've had a strategist with a two life, but they have tactical, so they can move. Ooh, and they have inspire, so somebody next to them uh, gets plus attack. This is going to work out well, because now I can move, and I want to be, like, here, right? Yeah, because then I can get pulled onto the stone. I'm going to have the Leviathan move one, but he's still next to the strategist for the bonus attack. And then I'll have the Depth Charger also be up here to try to get pulled under the stone. We're really <laughs> counting on that two-thirds uh, green chance. All right, and then abilities. We've got Hook. Rawr, let's pull this guy over. Oh, I forgot the Depth Charger has regen. Let's go. He's going to be stoning this dude forever. That didn't sound quite right, but it's okay. <laughs> Although I do realize that by uh, giving the Leviathan Inspire for an extra blue die, now he is less likely to get a perfect strike because he would have to hit on both the yellow and the blue for the double damage, but whatever. So here we go. Automatic hit in red and a yellow and a blue. Ah, okay. Well, you know, that doesn't make me feel better because the yellow would have missed anyway, so the perfect strike would not have triggered. So we've done two damage out of... Wait, he should only have five, not six. But he's going to regen on his turn, so really it's kind of like we only did one damage. Not that impressive. Because remember, defeating this guy would also deal a damage to the boss, so it's certainly good. All right, so now we go to the arena turn. We've got a bandit, we've got a lion. That's two. No room, people. Uh, it's going to be three on three until somebody dies. So uh, highest priority for everybody is still the Leviathan, unless they can not reach him and can reach somebody else. So bandit's going to stay right where he is. They want to use the minimum movement possible. He's already within his one range. Lion, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So he's going to go straight that way. Awesome. I mean, not really awesome, but hey, there we are. <laughs> and then uh, only the bandit is in range, and he attacks with a single black die on my Leviathan. Yeah, it's so about to hit, and also I forgot, he uses his ability to regen one. Leviathan's down to six life. All right, Immortal's turn. Help us out, buddy. So he wants to attack the Leviathan, which means that's the best spot for him. Man, come on, three times the charm. Uh, if I can get two damage on him from stones this turn, that would be awesome. Yes, let's go, let's go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, again, two-thirds and one-thirds, it is the most likely result, but to have it three times in a row, that's not super likely. Uh, so the Leviathan takes a damage. Uh, everybody simultaneously moves one space toward him. Huh. So, I guess, I mean, it says simultaneously, but I guess I still get to decide. So, like, we could go like that. If I said the strategist moved here, I guess I could say the Leviathan couldn't. But i kind of rather have the Leviathan there. Yeah, so we'll go like that. And yeah, the bandit has... Oh, I could have... No, I don't want the bandit to move on there because he's not going to hurt the guy by being on a stone. <laughs> All right, this is great. Going into my turn. Bloop, bloop. He's down to two life. Um, All right, so if I could somehow magically kill the bandit and the lion this turn, that would be all she wrote, but that seems unlikely. <laughs> Well, actually, maybe it's not. I mean, if I, like, bring everybody in and try to have the strategist inspiring everybody, which I could do, I could at least wail on one of these people, I think. And the lion's certainly the most dangerous. Although the taunt is going to... Oh, that's right. The Leviathan can't even move away while the lion is here because he's combat locked. So the best I could do would be, like, to send the depth charger around to attack the lion. He's got a blue and a yellow. That could certainly help. And, yeah, if I send the strategist to here, I could definitely get a ton of attacks going on him. I was going to mess up my whole, like, stone strategy <laughs> that's been working so well, but hey, what the heck. Let's actually try to defeat some people. Oh, wait, the second, how does combat lock work? Oh, the start of their turn cannot move. So my depth charger can get all the way over to here for three, and then strategist gets all the way over to here. And Leviathan can't move at all because of the uh, combat lock ability. And then I can decide the order of attacking, which does matter because, like, if the Leviathan just straight up kills the lion, for example, then I could have the... Uh, the strategist attack the boss, for example, and get us one of the favor track, which might not matter much. So I'm going to hopefully defeat him soon. But yeah, I guess let's have uh, let's have the Leviathan attack first, because, I mean, if he gets his double hit, he just straight up kills the guy anyway. Come on. Yeah, yellow just cannot hit to save its life today. That's fine. So no um, perfect strike triggered. Okay, so now Depth Charger will attack him. So because of the Inspire, he's got two blue and a yellow. And the lion has... Um... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Bandit has Taunt. 
So since I'm next to him, that one attack had to go on the bandit. Oh, that's not great. Now I'm probably not going to kill anybody. Well, we'll try it anyway. Death Charger is attacking the lion. So Stratus can only do one damage. I'd have to hit with all three of these, and yellow has never hit this whole game, so that doesn't seem likely. Oh my gosh. Uh-oh. We're going to get eaten, people. All right. Uh, strategist. <laughs> we don't really have to roll for it, but yay! Automatic damage. So the lion is down to two life. The bandits down to three. We're going to heal back to four in a second. None of that's exactly what I wanted, but so it goes. Oh, and regen didn't trigger because he's not hurt, and hook uh, didn't trigger because there's nobody two away. So we're going to the arena turn. Uh, nobody can deploy still. And let's see. Oh, okay. Everyone wants to attack the Leviathan because he's on a stone space. So even though the Depth Charger has identical health and like uh, if they were equidistant, I could choose who they attack. They have to attack the Leviathan. Leviathan's got five, so they could possibly kill him here if the line triggers the uh, perfect strike. Let's try for the Bandit's Black Die first. Hit. And this one's really important. Please don't get a double hit Lion. Oh, now the yellow hits. Oh, he's dead. Oh, Leviathan. So he's discarded until uh, if in one of the waves I can get my f uh, crowd favorite that's at zero all the way to there. And then I would, uh, yeah, no, that's not great. I mean, I wish I could forget this, but nope, he's regenning. Oh, this is not good because now the boss can just eat. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, actually, uh, somewhat good. <laughs> the boss's priority is actually the highest hit point person since nobody's on a stone. So he's going to go for the depth charger who can then regen some of it away, potentially. Let's see uh, what the boss gets. Still a green hit. So he sucks everybody towards him. Only person that applies to is this. And then he is doing one damage. Although I'm going, yeah, I mean, here, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to regen it away in a second. So who cares? Yeah, he's literally never gained any rage. And I am okay with that. So, sorry, Zempestia is not available. I can summon somebody else. Uh, but they can't move away from the line. So maybe, maybe I summon another strategist, get them to here with the plan being that hopefully the guy will suck me on here and I'll kill the lion and that'll be all she wrote. So sure. I'm just really, <laughs> because of this, uh, as Daha having this, uh, sucking in ability, I'm really leaning into my strategist this game. So we're going to go right there with other tactical ability. They can't move because of the lion. He regens. Let's fight. So uh, first, the Beast Charger is getting the extra blue. So it's two blue and a yellow. And the Lion's only got two life left. Come on. All right. No. No. Come on. All right. Whatever. Uh, strategists will do one automatic damage with their red die. That was some sadness there, people. And now the arena. All right. So the bandit does want to reach the depth charger. They are the strongest. Nobody's on stones. And the lion and the bandit are going to attack. I've seen this before. It didn't go well last time. Um, okay. So black gets one damage to the depth charger, which means he is primed for a lion mauling. Don't double hit. Don't double hit. Oh, thank God. Okay. So that's only one damage. <laughs> and he can heal uh, that back. So that's not too bad at all. We aren't out of the woods yet, because as Daha's coming in, what you got, buddy? What you got? Um, yes, oh my gosh. How many times is this going to happen? Okay, so this is good. Strategist gets sucked in. I think we're about to win. Uh, Bandit can't fit anywhere. Uh, Beast uh, Death Charge only took one damage. We go into our turn. Here we go. We get one automatic damage for the Strategist. And he's got to kill that lion, people. And we can't move away from him anyway. So yeah, let's uh, send strategists in here to help. Oh, never mind. They have automatic red damage. So boom. Uh, there we go. We have one. And all we lost in the grand scheme of things was bolster health and our Leviathan. That is our only copy of that unit, though. So let's do uh, one more wave. Even if I win it, I'll probably stop there just for time's sake. But let's see if we can go a little bit longer. So everybody else goes back. The Immortal's gone. All the arena units go back in the bag. All my units come back. The only things that are discarded are tactics you used and your units that got defeated. So these people will be like fully healed again if I use them. Maybe this time I'll actually increase crowd favor. Let's see. All right, so meet Immortal number two, the Realm Stalker. So he already does a lot more damage. Two moves, still six health. Combat lock. Ooh, he's got it this time and still Beastmaster. And then let's see uh, his abilities. So the green almost always hit. Realm Stalker deals one damage to a target for each other beast unit in play. So we got to hope we don't draw those or kill them as quick as we can. Uh, blue Realm Stalker deals two damage to each opponent on a stone hex. So yeah, the Immortals do kind of demand different strategies. This guy was kind of nice with stone. This person clearly is going more for a kill you if you're on the stone, like wait and defeat its minions kind of thing. What's yellow? Players may displace the Realm Stalker up to three hexes. For each hex displaced, Realm Stalker gains one hit point. Uh, I don't think I would want to do that. Well, I guess uh, if he hasn't been hurt at all yet, it'd be nice to just teleport him three spaces away. <laughs> but um, uh, once, yeah, once we actually hurt him, that seems like a uh, net negative for our team. 
It worked so well last time. Let's put him right here. He's coming in for us. I could do Depth Charger again. Um, yeah, I mean, he's not going to be able to reach me. I could just jump right on there. Even if he does his two auto damage, I won't die. So, yeah, you know what? I'm going to at least try to get one plink on him early. So with Tactical, bloop. Uh, Beastmaster's not going to matter much because my beast is dead. But uh, that should work out otherwise. All right, now we're going to spawn an arena and hope it's not a beast. And Okay, good, it's not. It's a ruffian. So they only have three life. That's pretty nice. Although they have quick strike. This is a good one to use our range attacks against. What quick strike means if you do a basic attack, so not a special attack, not a range attack, a basic attack in their range, they do one damage to you first. So they like uh, kind of immediately hit you and they can defeat you and cancel your attack if you're really hurt. All right. Um, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind him. I want him to like actually get to me, but being kind of close is okay. All right. So that's it for them. And now our friendy friend over here, he's going to roll. So if he doesn't get a blue hit, then he's not going to do anything because the green deals damage to his target and he's not attacking anybody yet. He needs to be adjacent. Uh, and it would, wouldn't matter anyway because there aren't any other beasts in play. And the yellow would let us teleport him away, which actually we would totally do because he doesn't take any damage yet. Right, so here we go. Okay, so wait. Um, so he's taking two damage, right? Because he's on a stone hex. And then we can teleport him up to three spaces away and uh, he regains a hit point for each one. Oh, wait, no, no. Ooh. I just realized this says gains, not heals. Gains? Why would I ever do this? Gains means it can exceed your starting health. I'm not going to give it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. No, I'm, I'm not moving him. He can eat my face. Um, <laughs> but yeah, get out of here. But good thing uh, I started on a stone. Woohoo! And now I'm going to run away from that stone. Ha ha! Because if I can stay away long enough, my regen will take care of me. Um, what do I want to play? Thinking maybe a marksman to try to take out that ruffian because that would ignore the quick strike. Uh, maybe my depth charger can kind of help out with that a little bit. So sure, let's uh, get the marksman uh, to life um, right here. Now uh, he has first strike, so he can attack on the first turn. But sadly, his regular range is two, and his long shot, where you'd only roll a single yellow die as a special attack, is four. So nobody's in either of those ranges. Okay, and the Depth Charger, no, I'm not going to stay there, because I'll die. Get the heck out of here. Uh, so, yeah, he'll, like, run back to support the Marksman. And his ability's going to trigger. And there we go. So, yeah, we got our one little Plinky Stone victory in. All right, more uh, backup coming out. Hopefully it's not a beast. And it's not, it's a Brigand, ooh, who moves immediately. Does a yellow, a red automatic damage and a yellow. But only three life again. So if I can get like a big tanky hitter in here. Yeah. All right. But he moves right away. So let's get him like all the way down here. So he's going towards the closest hex he can to my strongest person. Oh, they each have two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think is probably the closest. Three. Oh, it's all the same. So whatever. We'll just go like that. Okay. And then he's going toward the closest one. But they can't attack. Hooray for that. All right. And now it's our friendly friend over here. Um... So yeah, he's also just going towards whoever he can. He's going to roll everything, although it doesn't matter, does it? Because I'm not going to displace him with the yellow. Nobody's on the stone to be hurt by the blue. And there's no beast, and he's not hitting anybody anyway to benefit from the green. And by the way, I just remember that he has combat locks, so when he does get next to us, that's going to be a major issue. <laughs> but he's not next to us yet. You know, let's go. Let's go full-on crazy mode, people. Let's get another marksman. All right, and then... um. Oh, man, he's going to get to us if I move closer. I was thinking that I could move the Depth Charger up because after he regens, he'd have three, and then the Ruffian would prefer to attack him. But that's going to make the uh, the Realm Stalker be in range. So no, what should he do then? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess <laughs> they're just all going to hide in their corner for now. Oh, and same thing if I move the Marksman up to get a good attack. <sighs> I mean, it's fine, right? Uh, they'll both do a long shot on the Ruffian, so that's a yellow attack for each. And those are special attacks, so like if he was close enough to use his quick strike on them and do an automatic damage, they would still ignore it because it's not a regular attack. Hey, okay. One damage out of three. I'll take it. Let's not forget to heal our friend up here. So should be able to kill him pretty easily next turn. Get the Realm Stalker down to two life or four life, whatever he's at. <laughs> oh, you know, I could have done a tactic. Like I could have hamstrung that guy so that he wouldn't get his two green attack, but hopefully he'll miss on one and won't kill the marksman. We'll see what happens. And we'll see what happens right now, because there he is. And blah, brigand. Yeah, they're all just coming in to say hi. All right, so don't double hit my marksman, you butt. Don't do it. No, dead. All right, there's another unit gone. Whoops. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're going to get a warrior out. I just want to get some damage going. So warrior has a ton of dice, uh, two movement, three life. You know what? We're going to play poise, but he's not dazed. So he can, he can do his thing. 
first time. That means he can attack and move right away. And yes, he's going to because oh jeez, the beast realm stalker. Whatever. I don't care. I'm gonna kill this guy. <laughs> or maybe I am. Who knows? Um, and uh, depth charger marksman doesn't have a great shot of killing this guy. He'll come in to help finish him off. Maybe. <laughs> So lots of attacks going on this time, for better or worse. Okay, uh, Marksman first. So if we get a double hit, we don't have to have the Depth Charger attack the Ruffian and uh, suffer from his quick strike ability. Nope, we only got one damage. So Depth Charger is going to attack, which does immediately take one damage from the quick strike. And he's got a blue and a yellow. Give it to me. Give it to me. No, don't stop. Uh, okay. Okay, it's fine. Everything's fine here now. How are you? Uh, warrior on the Brigand. There's no way I'm going to kill this guy. What am I doing? <laughs> um, one damage. Okay. That's cool. That, that's fine. Everything's good. All right. And, um, ooh, the warrior has priority and the ruffian can reach him. So he's going to ditch the death charger and the marksman. Come right over here. Now the warrior does have retaliate. So he's going to hit back. Ooh, so he'll kill that guy. That's great. So yeah, let's have the ruffian attack first, but he can definitely get retaliated against. And two dice. Oh, I hit both. Bleh. Retaliate only works if you're not defeated. So, and down to four life. Yes. But we're not sure if I said before, defeated enemies go right back in the bag. So you might draw them again. Okay. And then sadly, we don't even need to roll for the brigand because he's got automatic damage. So our pinned tactic is gone. Our warrior is gone. We are, we are losing people, everybody. <laughs> we are I'm not even hit the boss to get my track up, to get my, uh, my hero out. Oh, this is not good. It's not good. Although I should be able to kill the brigand. Maybe. Kinda. Sorta. Potentially. Let's see. My turn. My turn. Okay. Oh, no, no. Sorry. The Realm Stalker first. What am I talking about? Uh, ah! And once again, we're not going to roll it for it because he can't do anything with his special abilities. Ah, uh, we got to get away. We got to run. Um, <laughs> let's see. I could... No, I can't. I could put a strategist down and run under the stone, but there's a 50% chance that the blue would hit me. And uh, kill me automatically. And even if it doesn't, uh, the green and the yellow attack will potentially kill him. So that's that's not that's not the, the play here, I don't think. Could get this guy with, like, taunt out. Try to hook some enemies away. I mean, I know they're going to be spawning some more people over here. Which maybe just makes me think I should have, like, a warrior over here. Just anticipating that I can put some guys there. So sure. We'll spawn another warrior. I'm uh, not going to use any tactics yet. Although with tactical, I could, like, hamstring him so he couldn't move and attack. All right, and then... Uh, let's have him run away. And I guess he'll heal, so that's kind of good. Oh, wait. If he runs that way, the Realm Stalker will go here, and the Marksman's going to move up to shoot this guy. So let's have him actually run, like, this way. Yeah, he's going to get combat locked, um, but, you know, that's okay. And then the Marksman will move up to get the better dice attack. In fact, you know what? Maybe... <laughs> Could go here. Nah, that seems dumb. Um... Yeah, I know I'm going to get combat locked anyway. So what the heck? I'm just going to go here, even though I know that I'm now I'm combat locked, because the boss is going to get to me anyway. And this way, if uh, the marksman gets lucky and kills the brigand straight up, I can start getting a tiny bit of arena favor, which I've never done, uh, with the Death Charger's attack. So come on, marksman. Bring it home, baby. Yeah, let's go. All right, so the brigand is defeated. And that, what's he down to? Ooh, three life. We got him halfway. We got him halfway. That's, that's really not too bad. I, mean, I was going to wonder why there weren't two arena units, but that's right, because one of them died after the deployment phase from his own attack. All right, and uh, as hoped, we can do a blue and yellow attack against the boss. So each damage I deal, if any, increases the favor track. One on the yellow, okay. So I'm four more damage on the boss away from unlocking my champion to bring out. All right, and now we're getting some peeps. And now it's a beast, of course. Hippopotamus. Five life. Uh, a lot of attack, two movement. And he has taunt. All right. My friendly warrior over here would like to say hi to you. Maybe. But yeah, that's all that he's doing. Okay, Realm Stalker. So he wants to stay with the Death Charger because he's got uh, the most life out of the two of them. And now all of this matters greatly. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay. So the green one ah, deals one damage to his target for each other beast in play. So he's doing two damage for his green and yellow first. Then he's triggering his abilities and defeating my guy. Ah. My camp is looking a little plain. I got two basic strategists, two of my uh, taunting tanky guys. I should have brought them out. They have way more life than everybody else. Got two tactics. I can't even bring my hero out uh, yet, which means if, it, if uh, she was the only unit left and I still hadn't reached here, then I would just lose automatically. But okay. And yeah, what's a bummer is he didn't roll the blue. So I guess like theoretically, no, no, never mind. He would have uh, 
come down and attack if I put like a strategist there. Alrighty, who am I gonna play? Maybe, maybe like this taunt guy to distract the realm stalker for a little while, or he could go down and help to defeat the hippopotamus. Now let's try to keep the marksman alive for a while. So let's uh, spawn him right here, which means the boss can just go right there and not combat lock the marksman. The marksman can stay where he is to shoot. I don't don't want the warrior to get too close because then the hippopotamus will get first strike on him. So I'll let the hippopotamus come to me and then run in and get my three dice hit. Yeah. All right, so marksman attack for a potential crowd favor. One more. Just creeping my way to unlocking my hero. That's it. All right, so they spawn another arena unit. Oh, gosh, it's another beast. This is not going to be pretty, people. He's got four life, though. So you know what? Hey, let's just put him right down here. We're going to try to make this our, our killing zone with the warrior somehow, magically. All right, and then the hippopotamus is going right where I want him to. Thank you. Then we get around to the realm stalker. And yeah, he's doing what I wanted him to, but this is going to potentially be a kill really quickly here. So I'm confused by the displacement ability. I don't understand why anybody would ever want... What the? What the? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> because if he hit him with that greed, that would have been two extra automatic damage. You could have killed my guy in one. Yeah, that was that was awesome. I'm just going to hang out, kissing each other for a while, but I'll take it. All right, so I can't uh, deploy anybody. But I'll start working the marksman down there. And yeah, I don't want the lion to get to me, so let's just fight the hippopotamus. All right, so attack on the boss from the marksman. Got one attack for on the boss from the uh, whip guy. Did not get one, so we're still two away. And then warrior on the hippopotamus. Come on. Two hits, and he's going to take one from Retaliate, so I have a pretty decent chance of killing him next turn. And yeah, speaking of, he stays right where he is. The lion is... Oh, that's the wrong color. The lion's coming for us. That's not going to end well. And the hippopotamus could one-shot me here. I mean, pretty low chance. Pretty... <laughs> Did I even get my retaliate, hippopotamus? You just ate my head like uh, Jack Black and Jumanji. <laughs> All right, that... I don't know, y'all. I better get my hero unlocked soon, because I'm going to lose. Uh, um, hmm. So now, Realm Stalker is going to attack me viciously, I'm sure. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, missed the one that mattered the most. That's just one damage, but not, again, that's not one damage. That's three when he hits because of his uh, beast buddies. Okay, okay, so that's that's good. What do I do here? Mine and the hippopotamus are coming. Um, my strategist could inspire some... Ooh, could inspire the marksman. Maybe I'll bring out a strategist. Yeah, okay, we'll bring out, I guess, a strategist. Um, Up, like, here. And Ooh, what the heck? I'll move him here to inspire both of them. And get us a lot more uh, crowd favor, I guess. Don't want to move next to him for the combat lock, though. All right, so we'll have the whip guy go first, since that's his only... Oh, nice! That's two. So we have now unlocked our champion. Awesome. Now my marksman could do a long-range attack on the hippopotamus, but uh, that's not a regular attack. It's a special. And inspire only affects regular attacks. So I'd rather have a chance of getting a bunch of crowd favor here. Let's see if we do... Only one. All right. All right, and then our friendos... Are coming to see us. Uh, great. At least we can shoot him now. Then Realm Stalker staying where he is. Uh, if he keeps on missing, that'd be great. Third time the charm, Realm Stalker. What the heck? Wow. 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 This guy should not be alive, my whip dude here. All right. All right. What do I do? What do I do? If I run the strategist over here, the marksman would still be inspired, and the strategist could do one automatic damage. That should be enough to definitely kill the guy off. And then he can keep on hitting the boss. I mean, I'm, I'm going to lose somebody, right? There's no way the lion's not going to eat a face here. I guess I'd rather meet the strategist. Well, actually, here. Okay. I mean, let's just use him, right? Yeah, because, yeah, when, when my uh, crowd favor advances more, I get, a bit all, I get all my discarded tactics back anyway. Let's hamstring the lion. So if he moves, he can't attack, which is pretty big here. Because my strategist is going to go over here. And the marksman's going to shoot. So the lion will come up but not attack. And then we can do the same combo here. He's locked right where he is. We know that. All right, so Hippopotamus has three life left. So the boosted marksman needs to hit twice because the strategist has got an automatic red. Yes, there we go. So yeah, two damage and the strategist attacks himself. Hippopotamus is back in the bag. And and we got two more hits to do on the beast uh, stalker there. And then whip guy can still attack. No boost this time, though. So I'll take whatever I can get, man. Uh, hey, there we go. So we're two away from getting back to discarded tactics, which would in this case uh, include bolster health and poise. Both good. All right, and then Lion. Um, so we can't reach this guy because he has the highest life. So he wants to get to the strategist. So that would be like a little bit further away. So the strategist is locked down, but because of the hamstring, the lion does not yet uh, actually attack her. Woot. 
Realm Stark. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. I do have to spawn somebody before any of that happens. And yeah, it's not a beast. Bandit. Okay, this is the regenerating one. He's hard to kill. See, so yeah, if we kill the lion, just like this guy would be enough. All right, let's get him out of the way. Then the lion does what he did. Now the Realm Stalker can't beat the whip. Whip it good. Oh, whoops. Okay, that is the one that will add a bonus damage from the lion. But dude, he ain't dead. He's down to two. He laughs at your claws, Realm Stalker. That's which means I can't bring anybody else out. Uh, I guess I'm gonna. Guess I'm gonna try to kill. Yeah, because the strategist can't move. Marksman doesn't want to move. I don't think. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, if the marksman can somehow get a ultra shot here <laughs> and hit with the black and the yellow and the blue, the strategist can finish off the lion. Not likely, but anything's possible. I mean, I'll take as much as I can get, you know, one or two. Ah, just one. Why'd the yellow hit nothing else? Okay, and then another one from the uh, strategist. You know, I guess it's not automatically dead. The lion would have to hit on the green and the yellow. The perfect strike to deal double damage certainly won't matter against this guy. Oh, and I forgot the whip. Here, we'll just roll it real quick here. Got it. Oop, almost to our taxi's coming back. Let's go. Okay, so lions there. This guy wants to get to the uh, whip dude, so he'll get it that way. Yeah, here we go, lion. Yes. Yes, strategist. That's what I'm talking about. You taught that lion to no fear, and uh, now it does. No fear. <laughs> um, Realm Stalker's turn. So he would have to definitely not hit on a green. He'd have to like only hit on blue or yellow. To not uh, kill my guy. But I believe in miracles. No, I don't. He's dead. <laughs> He's super dead. Okay, bye. But hey, you know what that means? You know what that means? Tempestria is here to hook some people up. And by hook them up, I mean hook them with her whip and kill them. I guess that's who I want to play. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay, so Tempestria. Um, should she be next to the Realm Stalker? He's probably not going to kill her. And she can, well, he might kill her and then I lose immediately. But I wasn't going to lose everybody else. So yeah, you know what? I think actually she is. I think she is gonna like be over here. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, Archer just needs to get a hit on our lion friend. Just needs to get a hit, and the strategist can finish him off. In fact, you know what? Um, um, hmm. I'm gonna move the strategist up here. Oh, no, because um, that. Mm, no, I mean, uh, uh, never mind. Never mind. We're good. We're good. Because God knows I don't want to not kill the lion. Okay. Pa. Okay, that was, darn it, we didn't need the strategist. Okay, dead, hamstrings back, so we can get that back if we uh, advance our stuff. We got a single thing left, so we just need to, like, get my my leader on a stone, because she wouldn't die immediately. Oh, right, but yeah, nobody else can attack. Oh, I guess she could hook him. No, that's right, she just came out, she's dazed. Okay, so we're getting a new arena person. Give me somebody, like, piddly with three life. A leopard with two life! Ooh, although, he's got deflect and absorb. Absorb means he can only take one damage from regular attack. Deflect is the one where once he gets attacked, he can't get attacked again. But very important to note, if um, if like the marksman shot him with long strike or long shot, which is not an attack, it's a special, um, and he took a damage from it, then the deflect would not stop the strategist from killing him. So, okay. Yeah, let's, uh, how far do they move? Four? I don't want them to get the jump on me, though. So, yeah, let's go over here. Actually, maybe over here. So that, yeah, okay. I don't know. And the bandit whoosh, going uh, as quick as they can. Well, actually, I guess they're going for my hero, technically, since they can't reach any of them. So whoosh, seems a little better. And then, yeah, Realm Stalker is saying hello. Uh, it's three damage because of the leopard. Ouch. And yeah, none of her uh, nice abilities like retaliate matter. And everybody, this is what regret feels like, because I didn't have to put my leader next to the death dealer. <laughs> I didn't have to. I did not have to. Oh, and now we can't even reach the bandit. Oh, my God. Gosh, oh my gosh. Um, what do I do here? What do I do? What if? <laughs> what if I run both of them under here? And then I'll just hold the and roll the blue to kill him. 50% chance. I also have to <laughs> adrenaline the marksman. Uh, and yeah, I need to have them both on there because uh, otherwise the bandit and the leopard will gang up on whoever is there by themselves. So, so boop. And... Uh, Boop. And sure. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great strategy, everybody. You saw this strategy here first, and it's going to be a great one. All right, so my, uh, my leader does at least get to attack. Two black dice would have been great against somebody who can actually be hurt. Uh, boom. So, ooh, baby, we get back poised. Bolster health. That might, well, I guess if they're alive, we win. If they're not alive, <laughs> we're in a bad way anyway. So we get all this back. And then marksman can shoot the regenerating bandit. Do I even care? Anyway, let's just shoot the boss with a long-range attack. Miss. Great. 
All right. All right. So the marksman can't die from the bit. Oh, wait. Crud. Their boss is going to run away. Uh, wait. Uh, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could have played this better. Okay. <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four. No, so uh, they don't care about strongest. Within each priority, like stone, they want nearest. So they're definitely going like here. Okay. All right. So single black died. I'd still love them to miss, but they're probably not going to. Nope, but he's still alive. Still alive. And then leopard. Leopard, that's a lot of dice. That's that's a lot of dice for a person with one life here. Why don't you, why don't you just let bygones be bygones, leopard? Come on, leopard. All right, strategist is dead. Yeah, here's the part I forgot. The Realm Stalker's not going to hang out with my boss. Uh, Realm Stalker's going to come right here and try to kill my marksman. My marksman's got two life left. So if the Realm Stalker misses in all three, I win. Let's go. It's a low chance, but he's done it before. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. Bye. Bye-bye. I want to see the decimation of my team here, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 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 Uh, what can I do? If I kill the leopard, I win. Ah, if I throw the leopard, I win. <laughs> Unfortunately, my boss is not near the leopard. Um, could like pull the bandit close to me. Um, ooh, what if, what if, if I play the strategist with poised just for overkill, and, like went here, move my boss up, pull the dude in. Two blacks and a blue. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not even nearly enough. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, Leopard's the way to go, right? Okay, so we're going to play Poised on the, the five health guy. So you can move right away. He's going to go over here. Um, a boss is going to get murdered. Uh, he's going to run away. I don't know. Um, and then the Leopard, uh, he's going to hook the Leopard to him. Oh, and he's not. Uh, this person does not have combat lock. Okay. And then he can attack because he's uh, got the ready or whatever that tactic was. Right, it's a green. He's got to hit this time and hit next time. That's one out of two, baby. And my leader needs to not die. Um, you know, which is a thing that can happen sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so Bandit wants to go towards my leader. Leopard is very happy where they are. Okay, they only take yellow, blue. Two damage. Okay. He's got three left. It's going to work, everybody. It's going to work. Assuming Realm Stalky over here doesn't uh, kill me. Can't kill me. Okay, good, good. Even with the bonus, can't kill me. I just need Hooky Taunty Guy to hit. Actually, you know what? I don't. I just realized. Boom. So that's three damage with the bonus. My hero's alive. And that's okay because Strategist, last unit. Uh, okay, we got to do this. Uh, coming in. Can't actually help to fight because he's just got tactical. But he's going to give this guy a green and a blue. See, one hit, people. Boom, boom. One hit. Come on. Come on. No! 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 I... What the two thirds times half one third? Oh my gosh! One out of six. I guess. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Oh man, if the leopard could get to my hero, they would, because that would be their preference. And then they would, uh, they would maybe kill her. But if not, her retaliate would kill them. We would win immediately. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay. So Leopard stays there, but the bandit reaches us. This is it. No, we're dead. We're so dead. Yeah, the bandit's attacking for one. So I got to somehow, again, not have the Realm Stalker hit at all. You know what, Leopard? Just, just kill the whip guy because he, he is a fail. My other whip guy, best dude ever. This whip guy, weak sauce, right? A one day, he deserves more than that. <laughs> all right, well, here we go. Uh, got to get no hits, people. No hits. Oh, that's more than zero. <laughs> So, bleh, immediate death. Well, let's be real for a second. Even if I had hit, everything would have cleared. But all I would have had going into the next round was a bolster half, a health, and hamstring tactic, a single strategist, a single whip person. And I would have had to, uh, if I wanted to even bring out my hero again, get to five crowd favor to bring her out. So, yeah, we were not beating a third immortal, but I couldn't even beat two. Mm. All right. Anyway, that, that was uh, Alpha Magus Remastered. <laughs> Go to the Google form in the uh, video description. Get, enter the contest to get the metal dice. And we'll find out who the winner is when I play a totally different mode that I'm certainly going to demolish. Gonna win. Count on it. <laughs> Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.